Let's consider this simplified and somewhat contrived problem. What we can see here is I've asked for us to implement the following simplified uh, class and collaboration diagram. And the idea is to do this in Visual Basic. Now if we have a look at the class diagram, which is this here, what we can see is I've given it a name, my adding class. And within this particular class, I have here a class level variable called sum of two CL. Now the CL is something I use to remind myself that I'm dealing with a class level variable. And to make life easy for this particular problem, we're going to make this an integer. If we have a look here, what we can see is we have a method called add to that takes in as a parameter number one and number two. And these are going to also be integers. If we look at the note here, we can see that the add to is to be implemented as a sub method. And I've gone on to say in the note as well that number one and number two are going to be integers. Now, this particular variable here, when I go into the code, is going to be declared as a private class level variable. Now, this implies that I will need a read only property procedure to gain access to it. And I'm going to call that sum of two. Now, if you look very carefully, you'll see this sum of two name is very similar to this name here. The only difference is I've removed the CL there. And this is another technique that I use to enable me to easily locate which particular class level variable is associated with which particular property procedure. They've almost got the same name, whereas the variable simply has CL following it. If we come down here now to the collaboration diagram, we can see here that I've got an unnamed instance of Form 1. Now this implies that I'm going to implement this particular simple problem using a Windows Form application. If I come over here, what you can see, I am creating an instance of the class My Adding Class, i.e. this class over here. I'm going to create an instance of that. And I'm going to name the instance My Object. What we can also note here is this is an example of stereotypes for visibility. And this particular one here is telling me that there is local visibility here, which means that the unnamed instance of Form 1 creates the instance of my object, which is an instance of the class my adding class. And it must be doing this within a method inside this particular form. And the object reference must be a local variable to that particular method. That's what this really means here. Now, if we return to look at the collaboration diagram, we can see there's two messages and they're numbered. For example, here we can see we have message one and that is followed by message two. And we can see that the messages is going in the direction here. Now, this implies that we're sending the messages from the instance of form one, the unnamed instance, to this instance here of my adding class, i.e. the object that I've called my object. Now, the order of the messages is important when we come to actually implement the code. If we look at the first message, we can see here that we're sending message one, which is add two. Now that is this particular method here that was declared in my adding class. So when we create the instance of this class, i.e. this as shown by the collaboration diagram, what we're doing, we're calling the method that exists within this object and we are passing it two numbers. We're passing n1, which is an integer, and we're passing n2, which is also an integer. Now the method inside this class, what it must do, it must take the n1 and the n2 and work out the result. And of course, the result is simply their addition because what we're doing here, we're adding the numbers. Now, where will that addition be stored? Well, the implication is, is we'll be storing it in here in the sum of two CL class level variable. Now, I'm referring to it here as a class level variable. Of course, it will be an instance variable in here which is at the level of the class, which means that this particular variable would be available to all methods that existed within the class and consequently existed 
within the instance of that class. All code within the class, therefore within the object of that class, would have access to that particular variable. Now that's important for our understanding of what's happening. Now when this particular message has been executed by the method in here, what we will have, we will have a particular number stored in here in sum of 2CL. So for argument's sake, let's just say that was 2 that was passed in and this was 3 that was passed in. Of course, what we would have stored in here now would be 5 because it's simply adding those up. Now the second message, which is message 2, what that is doing, it is going to get a copy of the 5 that's stored in this particular variable. And it's doing that using this here, sum of 2. Now this is going to be a read-only property procedure when I move into the code. And what this is telling me is that it's going to be returning something and that something is going to be of type integer. Now if it's going to return, it's going to be returning from this instant here to this instant. Consequently, this instant needs a variable to store the result. And this what this is here. This is a variable that is declared inside here which will store the result of the number returned from this particular object here. Now I can tell that because if you look here there's that assignment statement and what this is telling me is that something's going to get returned. So if you like you can think of this side returning something to here and this is an indication that there's going to be a communication in this direction in terms of the data that's going to be returned. The next video in the playlist is going to show how we can implement what's represented here in Visual Basic, i.e. what's represented by the class and the collaboration diagram. So I would recommend that you now watch the next video in the playlist.